back to my channel. Tonight I have a gorgeous model, Pamela, and we're gonna do a holiday look for you guys. I know this time of year, we all have either parties to go to or maybe you're doing family photos, so I thought it would be fun to show you guys a look where I can just show you how to take your basic makeup look and elevate it a little bit so you can look more glam and feel special for all you have going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We are gonna prime her skin. This is called um, Water Balm. So this is a really great lightweight moisturizer and it plumps the skin slightly so it's just gonna make our canvas really smooth. And Pamela has more, she's oily through her T-zone, she said, and then a little, a little dry on your cheeks. So this is a really good option because it's gonna just balance her out. So I'm gonna be doing a look today. The colors are gonna be neutral and we'll probably do a bright festive lip, but this is universally flattering. So all the colors I'm doing today will look good on everybody. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and prime her lids. Go ahead and close for me. I've already filled in her brows and this is Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. So I'm just gonna prime her lids with it. This concealer, go ahead and turn towards me, is really opaque, so it works great for an eyeshadow primer. Unless you tend to have really oily lids, then I would use something like MAC Paint Pot. Okay, once that is on, I'm just gonna go ahead and just lightly powder her lid just to set that. Okay, the eye look we're gonna do today is actually pretty simple. We're gonna do more of the focus on having really glowy skin and some nice lashes and a bold lip. So I'm gonna go in with the color Soft Brown. This is by MAC, and this is one of my very favorite shadows. It's like a pinky nude brown, but it's just really flattering with any makeup look that you do. So I'm just gonna go in with this really large brush and put some dimension in her crease, and just a light wash of color across her lids. Okay, go ahead and turn towards me. I really like bronzy tones when I do a red lip. I feel like they pair really well together. And because this has like very slight pink undertones in it, it also balances really well with the red lip. Now I'm just gonna go in with a clean makeup brush and just buff the edges a little bit. So now that that is on, it's just a really light wash of color. I wanna deepen it up a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go in with the same color soft brown but a smaller makeup brush. And I'm just gonna define the crease. Go ahead and close a little bit more. And because we are live streaming this tonight, if you guys are joining us live, you can go ahead and ask questions in the chat box and we'll get to those in a little bit. Okay, this is called Texture by MAC. It's in the same tonal family. It's just a few shades darker. So I'm going just back into the crease again and lightly darkening that up. So Pamela has been a model for a while, so you get your makeup done all the time, right? Yes. <laughs> what are some of like, we have actually a good amount of makeup artists that watch, what are some things that makeup artists do that you love and what are some things that maybe you haven't been a fan of? Um, I love how you're delicate with touch. Oh, so thank you. <laughs> go ahead and close. I've had experiences with makeup artists um, kind of beating my face. Oh no. Raw. Oh shoot. And chunks of my eyebrow missing. Like from plucking? 
No, They're from just... filling it in. Really? Yeah, they fill it in very aggressively, and a chunk of my eyebrow was missing one time when I got home. That's so sad. <laughs> um, I like glowy, you know, makeup. Mm -hmm. Nothing too cakey and heavy. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have anything in particular. I didn't close me. I can think of. It's always nice getting your makeup done. Yeah, for sure. So if you a makeup artist watching, be gentle. Don't rip out your client's eyebrows. Be that gentle, really is please. so sad. <laughs> it's true, it happened. More than once. Really? Yes. Different people? Yeah, two different people. Wow. <laughs> okay, so. Don't say who. Yeah, okay, yeah, don't say who. <laughs> So I just did a really light wash of shimmer on her lid. The label fell off, but I think it's all the glitters by MAC. So go ahead and look forward. So I'm actually gonna keep the eyes pretty soft. I will, I'm gonna go with liner next, and I may deepen up this area. But um, when I want kind of a, like a natural glam holiday look, I either pick the eyes of the lips to go bold on, and we're gonna do lips today. And because we're adding a lash, the eyes are already gonna look pretty glam, so we're gonna keep it pretty soft. So I am gonna go in with some liner. I'm gonna go in with a dark brown and an angle brush. Okay, go ahead and close for me. And I'm actually just gonna use powder, I think, when I, um, take a look on at it after the lashes I might add some black but one thing I really like to do like a good tip for you guys um, especially for those of you that have a hard time blending makeup and you want it to look a little bit softer if before you apply liner you add um, like a wash of really dark brown with an angled brush or a pencil brush and then you add your black liner it really really softens the look and it's much more flattering. So I'm doing this line fairly thick because we are putting on the lashes. Those usually take up a little bit of the lash, the lid space. So I like an angled brush for, for this, but I also like, um, like those flat kind of square tip brushes. I just didn't bring mine down. Okay, go ahead and open for me. So it just deepens it up just a little bit. Okay. All right, so for the lashes, we are first gonna curl her own lashes before we apply them. Okay, go ahead and open and look forward. Look up just a little bit. Does that pinch? Nope. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so Pamela has like amazing lashes. Like they're really long and really thick. You got very lucky, but they do, they're a little bit straighter, so before I put on the lash, I like to curl them. I actually do this for most people. It's a really, really great trick to make the eyes look more open. And then when I apply the lashes, I'm kind of going to set them um, so that they're resting up a little bit. And these are, these are Kiss Lash Brand, and they are number 11. These remind me a lot of Wispies by Ardell. They're very, they're pretty natural, but they definitely will give your own lashes more volume. Okay, just gonna measure them. So these are straight out of the package, so we might need to um, do a bit of trimming. And it looks like we're going to. Um, I will show you guys how. So go ahead and look forward. When you pull the lashes straight out of the package, they have a little bit of glue on the band already, um, which is kind of nice because then you can stick them to your lash line slightly and just see how they look. So on Pamela, these would probably fit, 
but you can see how they're really long down here and it's hanging down a little bit. I don't want her eye to look like it's like tilting down. I want the eyes to be lifted. So I'm going to trim off this lash last cluster. So when you trim your lashes, you always want to do it from the outside. And usually I'll put it on the eye, I'll look at it. And then the lashes have little clusters and I'll start by just cutting like one of them off and see how it looks. And you can save them if you want, the little clusters. Um, oh, you know what? I don't know if I've got lash glue down. All right, we might just be doing mascara. Okay, I'm gonna put on mascara and then we'll see if I have glue anywhere. side in the middle. Good luck. My husband's going to get the glue. I uh, Let's place bets if he can find it. I don't think he can. <laughs> That's a very nice one. Okay. Um, hang on one second. Okay, so a trick for doing mascara on other people. For me, I like to go in there with so much mascara and get the lashes very full that it can be messy. So what I usually do is go ahead and look down but don't close. Um, is I take like a metal spatula or something and I put it right in front of their lid and I will smooth the lashes up into it and that just helps me from getting it on the lid. That's a great idea. Yeah, it works it's... really good. <laughs> <laughs> they sell these um, like they're called lash shields. So it looks like the handle of a makeup brush, but then it has a plastic little moon shape and you can like hold it oh. behind your lashes. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, that's what they're for. I'm okay with putting it on, but I blink and then it gets on my eyelid as I'm doing something else. Or I look down Yeah. and I look up and then it's all over my eyelid. <laughs> Cause they're so long, Pamela. <laughs> You're just bragging. No. no, just kidding. <laughs> okay. So let's, um, let's go into foundation and I probably will even come back and add a little bit more mascara. All right, so this is Makeup Forever HD. I really like this foundation. It's um, a medium coverage, I would say, like a light to medium. So I going to apply it with the Kabuki brush. So these brushes are really great. They're really soft and they're really dense. So it does a great job of blending it into the skin. And I always start off with just like a light layer and then I'll keep applying more. Um, this, I would say this is like a natural satin foundation, but it does mat down a little bit. So I don't like to go in with too much all at once or you'll get like sort of spots, which isn't good. What foundation do you use usually? I've been using Bare Minerals for like 10 years. I'm not very good at putting on liquid uh, foundation, so it's easy for me just to use powder and yeah. swirl and buff, and it takes me about five minutes, 10 minutes. A lot of people love that one, actually. Do you pay attention to the products that makeup artists use when you're getting your makeup done? I try to if there's something that I really like, but I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do try if I remember. Yeah. <laughs> what have people used that you really liked? Like, what have products been when you're like, oh, I got to go get that? Uh, I like the moisturizer you just used. It's so good. <laughs> uh, it feels good on my skin. It's a good one. What foundations do people usually use? Um, hmm. I don't remember the brands, honestly. It's always different. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, everybody uses different things all the time, or, you know, mixtures of different foundations together. Yeah, that's true. People depot them sometimes, too. Like, they'll put them in different containers. Like, one of my lines I do that with. Mm -hmm. I'm always curious. Like, I love seeing what other artists, what foundations they use. 
Right. Because I feel like that's such an investment to get. Like, you can get an eyeshadow palette and it will look good on everybody, but for foundation, you need it to work. Like, you need different ones for different skin types Turn towards me, and then you have to get, like, all the tones. Not all of them, but most of them, so you can mix. Mm-hmm. I like to see what people choose. <laughs> or they'll already have it on the palette, on the metal Oh, uh, that's sheet, true. So you can't see the bottle. Yeah. So, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just doing a light wash of this. And even though it's like kind of sheer, it does a great job of just evening out her skin. And then I am bringing it down the neck a little bit. So for if I'm doing client makeup or holiday makeup or something like that, I do usually bring it down the neck a little bit, depending on what they're wearing. Um, unless you do airbrush, it can get on their clothes. So I, like, I'll ask them and stuff. If I if they don't want foundation, I'll do bronzer or something like that. But because usually around this time, like, you are taking pictures with friends or something like that, and if you don't have foundation on your neck and chest area. Even if it's the same color, like the light will bounce off of it different and they'll look different colors. So for that reason, I do foundation on both. Okay, I'm going to go in with some concealer under her eyes. This is Tarte Shape Tape. I'm going to mix two of them, I think. This one's light natural. I'm going to start with this and see what I think. Actually, that's okay. I don't like to go too light under the eyes. I like to do maybe like... A shade lighter so this concealer is great like you'll see so many people using Tarte Shape Tape and it works fantastic but it is definitely on the heavy side so I like to go in with a fluffy brush and just blend it as I go and that way it doesn't look cakey and you have a very smooth under eye area if people, it's good, it's a good thing. Um, if you don't, or if your client doesn't, I really like NARS Creamy Radiance. That's a great under eye concealer and it has really good coverage as well, but it's a little bit thinner and it, um, it doesn't dry as matte. So it's good for people that have more dehydrated under eyes. So I'll do, when I apply this, some brow hairs from earlier, <laughs> right there, get those off. Um, when I apply this, I'll do like little baby, I'm getting off those hairs, um, little baby swirling motions just to blend it, like really light though. Because if you're moving it around, you don't want to irritate this skin. Um, and you also don't want to wipe the concealer away. So I'm just doing like little baby like swiping motions. And then when it's pretty blended, I'll just press. So from now on, we're only going to press because you don't want to wipe away what we've done. I'm going to do highlight the nose a little bit. Yay. I know. Woo. Uh -huh. I like highlights. I'm just yeah. highlighter. So that is looking good. Turn towards me. I'm going to bring the highlight down just a little bit to balance out her face. So you want to be careful. If you're doing your under eye concealer lighter, which a lot of people do, um, you want to bring it down into like a little triangle. If you just go lighter right under the eyes, it's going to look funny. If you bring it down, it looks amazing. Okay. And she, you, she has just a teeny bit of redness under her nose. A lot of women do. So I'm going to use NARS concealer. Oh, there. Okay, so you can see. This, I just um, saw someone else recommend this online. So I got a couple last time I went makeup shopping. And this is like my favorite concealer ever. It works super good. This is shade um, 2.5. And you just need like the teeniest bit, but it has a fantastic texture. Um, it's like a, it's a cream, it's in a pot. And most pot concealers that I've used, they're a little bit too dry. They're hard to blend, like you'll get it on and the coverage is great. But once you kind of move it around, it wipes off. But this one is fantastic. So you use um, Bare Minerals 
mm -hmm. on a day-to-day. -day. What's your makeup routine like? What else do you do? Um, well, I have to be very sanitary with my skin because I break out. Mm. So I make sure I wash it really well. Um, use a scrub if I need to get off any residue. Um, then I use a toner, definitely, and moisturizer. So I always do that. Mm -hmm. And then usually I'll just go in and put powder on. And then I'll put some concealer on, just a little bit underneath my eye and around my nose. And then I'll put like a just a loose uh, finishing powder. And um, I use the Anastasia brow, the same same one as you. Oh yeah, yeah. the the dip brow. Mm -hmm. I use that. And uh, eye primer, eyelid primer, eyeshadow, and then eyeliner, and I have bronzer and highlighter. Not nice. every day, but that's usually yeah. It only take it doesn't take that long. It sounds like a lot, but yeah, when you do it every day, it gets quicker. It does, <laughs> especially if you kind of have like a routine like that. Like mm -hmm. even though it sounds like you're saying a lot of products, like if you do it every day, it becomes mm -hmm. just super quick. Mm -hmm. I bet it doesn't take you too long. It's normally in the same order too. Oh, nice. I'm just on autopilot. I just get up half awake and do it, and somehow it somehow comes out looking okay. <laughs> <laughs> you always look good when I see you. Okay, this is um, Benefit Hello Flawless. I did um, like a shade darker than her skin around the areas of her face, and now this highlighting color I'm gonna do. Just lightly over top that concealer. And like barely any, because this is a foundation powder, so it has a little bit of coverage, so you do not want to do too much under the eye area. So the reason I use a lot of powders um, for makeup like this, like let's say she's going to a holiday party. I want the makeup to last however long that is. So usually I'll set it with finishing powders. That way her skin looks really, really flawless. And then I'm going to go in after and re-add my glow. So I'll show you how to do that. So this is the Hourglass. Um, I think it's called the Ghost Palette, but I just got it and I really, really like it. They have um, like a translucent glowing bronzer that's great that I'm going to use on her. So do, like the look of dewy skin is really popular right now um, and it's very beautiful. It just doesn't hold up quite as well, especially if you have um, like an oily t-zone or something like that. So that's another good reason to set with powders. I'm just doing, this is more of a bronzer than a contour, so I'm doing it on her forehead and down the middle where the sun would naturally touch it and just on the higher points of the cheekbone. And now I'm gonna go in with an actual contour color. And we'll contour her cheeks a little bit. So I like to do it, go ahead and turn for me. So I usually do in the like the hollow area of the cheek, like if you made a fish face, it would be in there. But I tend to do it um, slightly above it so that the face looks a little bit lifted. Um, for her shape of face, I'm gonna do kind of a larger contour and I'm also gonna do the edges. And then I think with her forehead bronzed, I'll do a little bit of this contour like up in here just for balance, but she doesn't need um, she doesn't need much up there. Some people, if you're working with like a larger forehead, you can add more contour up there. But the contour is more just to add dimension. So be mindful of where you place it because every face is different. So you can see what works for you. Okay, go ahead and turn towards me. So once my foundation is on and my powders are on, I'm not doing any more swiping motions. I'm doing like the pressing motions so you don't disrupt all the layers that you've done. If I swipe, it's like super light, like just to blend it a little bit. And this is a pretty pigmented contour. So if you ever feel 
like you get too much, you can go ahead and use that um, the finishing powder that we did earlier and you can go over top of it. So I'm gonna go in with that same brush. So this is the finishing powder, so it's a lighter shade. So I'm just gonna go over the edges a little bit and blend it slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this Hourglass palette. It has um, a highlighter and these are finishing powders that have like a sheen to them. So we're gonna go in with those. I'm gonna mix the two finishing powders and I'm just gonna go like on the high points of her face just to give her a nice glow because we took away her glow when we did those foundation powders. <laughs> so we're adding it back. But this is super pretty. I really love Hourglass products um, because they just mimic light. Like there's really no, there's no glitter in them and there's really only like a finely milled shimmer. Like if you look at it in the palette, it almost looks like matte, but with a glow. So it looks really great on all skin types even like more mature or dry skin where it's like it tends to show that texture. The hourglass looks good on everybody. Okay, and they also in this palette have a really pretty highlighting shade. So I always use just a little bit of that. Right on the high points of the cheeks. And same thing, like if you're, you are gonna do like swiping motions, do it super light, like barely touch the skin. Especially with highlighters, because they tend to grab. All right, we are gonna go ahead and add some blush. Um, Look at me for a second. Okay, to go with the bronzy look, I'm gonna do, uh, this is called Warm Soul by MAC. And it's really pretty. It almost reminds me of like the blush version of the eyeshadow we did. Like it's um, a bronzy tone, but it has almost a hint of like peachy pink. And it pairs really well with red lipstick. For her lips, we're gonna mix two things. We are gonna go in with, um, this is called Fire and Ice, it's by Revlon, and it is beautiful. It's like your classic red. It's a really popular color, so we're gonna do a little bit of that. And then we're also gonna mix it um, with a color from the Anastasia Lip Palette. So I'm gonna put it on my palette, and I'm gonna go in as well with um, this color. So if you guys have ever worked with this palette before, it's really awesome because it has a bunch of lipstick shades, but then these are all primary colors. They're mixing mediums. So this shade, Fire and Ice, is really pretty, but it's a little bit too much of like a pink undertone, like it's a blue-based red, and I want it to be slightly more of a true red, like a Christmas red. So I'm gonna add this red from the Anastasia palette, and this is a true red, like it's a pure red but it's a, it's a little bit deep. It's a little bit too kind of bland for my liking, so I'm gonna spice it up with the other little color. So before I put that on, I am gonna line her lips with a liner. This is called Beat by MAC. So I just like to do a bit of a liner for like a guide when I'm doing red lips just because they're so, you have to be so precise. If you're throwing on a nude, go ahead and look at me. Um, it doesn't have to be quite as perfect, but when you're doing a red, it's very vibrant and people are gonna notice your lips, so you wanna get it as even as you can. And this is gonna be covered up by the lipstick, 
um, so it doesn't matter if it's the exact same tone. And Pamela has like a great shaped lip, so we're just gonna follow her natural lip line. So if you are wearing red lips out, always bring your lipstick with you because unless you're doing a liquid lip, they just tend to rub off. They, especially if you're doing them so perfect like this, um, when they, if you eat or something like that and they start to like fade away, they just don't look as nice. So you wanna touch them up. I don't think we've ever done a red lip on you, have we? I feel like we always do like smoky eyes and nude. Yeah, you're, <clears throat> you're right. This is fun. That'll be fun. <laughs> do you do red lips very often? <clears throat> yeah, lately. And just lately I have. I feel festive for the holidays. <laughs> yeah, it's the time of year to try it. Mm hmm Fire and Ice, this, um, this Revlon color, I'm pretty sure the shade has been around since like the 50s. I think I was looking it up, I don't know why, like the most famous red, red lipstick colors. It's like stood the test of time. Oh. <laughs> I know, go red lips. Okay, so I also, when I do red lips, I like to um, outline the lips with concealer. I go maybe like a half shade lighter than their skin tone and this just helps the lips um, like stand out a little bit more and they look really precise. So I'll probably do this after we apply the lipstick but I also like to do it a little bit before just to clean up that concealer line and just give myself a head start so that it already is like a little bit easier. Like the more even you can get the pencil, the more even you can get your lipstick. So I always um, like will scrape my lipstick out and put it on a spatula just to keep it sanitary for clients. Um, but when you're doing your own lipstick, you obviously can do it from the tube. But for red lips, I would recommend doing it with a brush. It's just a lot easier. And this brush, this is by Monda Studios. It's the 170. And it is a great brush because it's very skinny, but it's pointed like that, so you really can follow the lip shape. Which I like. Can you trust me a little bit? Good. So sometimes on lip brushes, like, you'll get one little hair that sticks out and then it'll like drag the lipstick on your face and it's the worst. I'll like mm -hmm. give them haircuts. Like <laughs> when I give them a bath, my brushes, if they have any like weird hairs, I always cut them off. So this um, lipstick color, the Fire and Ice is more of like a, not a gloss, but it has a lot of shine in it. Um, and the Anastasia one's very matte, so it kind of evens it out. But when you're choosing like a red lip, um, most people just look for a color that's flattering on them, which is good. But it also is good to pay attention to the formula. The matte lips are harder to apply, but they last a long time on the lip. Like they adhere to your lips better. The ones with more shine tend to rub off quicker. So if you have a preference, also, some people have like more drier lips naturally, so the matte ones can be like a little bit harsh. Okay, go ahead and open slightly. I took a makeup class from somebody and they're like, the number one rule for lips is to never have like a floating lip. Like you always wanna connect <laughs> the little sides. And it's a good tip. So after we do the lips, I am going to curl her lashes again, add a little bit more mascara and a little bit more definition to her eyes. Since we're not doing the lashes, I'm gonna add a little bit more drama with shadow. Just a little bit of darkness. You can go ahead and close 
if you want to. Keep in again. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in um, with my concealer and I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So this one is by MAC. Um, I think it's the 242, it rubbed off and I'm gonna again outline the lips because we do have a little bubble on one side. And we're gonna get to questions in just a second. So if you guys have any, go ahead and write them down. I know there's a couple right now. So when you do this and you like dip back into your concealer, you're, it's going to be a little bit pink. So either use a little br another brush or wipe it off. Okay, let me look and see if we have any questions. Let me pull up the chat really quick. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, Jazz H says, what powder did you use to set the eyes? So actually it was just an eyeshadow. It was Vanilla by MAC, and I really lightly just went over the entire lid. I like to start with the eyeshadow just because it brightens everything up, and my other shadows look more true to color. Oh, and someone said they like the tree. Thank you. Um, and then Jamie said, love how natural this looks so far. Your model is pretty already to start with. Yes, she is. <laughs> but definitely the foundation even things out and hardly seems like she has any on nice. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, Pamela has fantastic skin. You have a really good texture. Thank you. But that foundation, it is, it's just super natural. I like it because I like um, that the formula is super thin. So it's really flattering. Go ahead and turn towards me on people's skin. And these cameras don't lie. Like we film in HD, so you see everything. Not to scare you, you look great. <laughs> but all right. No, I get a lot of redness. That's my issue. Yeah. Um, some sometimes it varies. What I want to do, especially in the winter, is a teeny bit of lipstick on your teeth. Yeah, most people will get redness like right under their nose and maybe like a little bit on the chin. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a hormonal thing. People like women tend to get it more. That's why I love um, that NARS concealer, especially for like those areas because it's pretty long wearing that formula and it tends to cover things up well. Okay. Pamela is looking fantastic. We're just going to add a little bit more drama to the eyes. And thank you guys for watching live, everyone that's here with us tonight. That was great. Okay, go ahead and look forward. I'm going to get a little bit closer to your lash line. Does that pinch at all? So I always like gently squeeze and then I ask them if it pinches because you don't want to just go for it if it's touching any skin or anything like that. Okay, how's that? It's good. It's so weird to have your lashes curled by somebody else, huh? <laughs> I think it's weird. <laughs> All right, so now that those are curled, let's go in with a little bit more mascara and then I'm going to add a little bit more eyeshadow. So I just use disposable wands. Okay, go ahead and look down for me. Perfect. They sell, so if you like love a mascara, 
like the formula like it's great it lengthens it thickens but you don't like the brush you can buy disposable ones I used to have really 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 skinny ones mm -hmm. and they were super good for getting near the root I should get some more because that would be great you know okay look up for me your bottom ones are crazy long thanks I never do it for me. I never put mascara on them. Yeah, they're like a bit blonde at the end. Like they didn't look as long as they were. <sighs> I like the look of bottom mascara when I'm gonna do like a little bit of eyeshadow under the eyes, which I'm gonna do now. Otherwise, I feel like it's a little bit out of place. All right, so this is that vanilla color that we set the lid with. I'm just gonna add a little bit in the inner corner of her eyes. And this is um, Shroom. This is a shimmer. It's also by MAC. All the shadows I use tonight are by MAC. Okay, so now that the mascara is dry, this is, um, go ahead and close. It's a dark brown, and I'm just going to add a little bit more near her lash line, and I'm going to buff it up a little bit with another brush. So this is another blending brush. I think these are all by MAC, so it's the 217. And I like to take like a clean one after I pack down some shadow and just buff it a little bit. So especially because we just did mascara and not the lashes, this is actually a really easy look to do and it's like very wearable. Like you're not gonna look too overdone. You're just gonna look really fresh and really pretty. And all the highlighters we did, even though it seemed like a lot, we were layering a lot, and I might even add one more. It just, when you layer them, it makes it look like you're glowing from within. If you just slap on like your very shiniest one, it looks like you just slapped on your very shiniest one. Like it's, it's very apparent. Okay, go ahead and open for me. So this, um, this is another shadow by MAC, this one. Is kind of like a golden and I'm just gonna go in under her lash line and just smudge this slightly and this one has a sheen to it so it's gonna reflect light and look really pretty so I really like when I just do mascara like this and not um, false lashes I love just using like a brown liner and then smudging bronzy shadows like this. I feel like it's so much more flattering. I think we have a couple more questions coming in, so I'll get to those. Okay, Laura said, do you ever do red on yourself? Uh, yeah, I do sometimes. I like more orange-based reds on me. Like, I have pink undertone in my skin, but I look better with, like, bronzy makeup, so I really like Canara's Heat Wave is my favorite. And then Michelle Brady said, every time I use foundation, it looks cakey in some areas. How do you prevent that? Um, if you like the formula of your foundation, it well, it could be that. Sometimes formulas that are a little bit more matte drying will look cakey. Um, it could be that you're doing it too thick, but most likely it's just that your skin, um, the texture isn't working with the foundation. There's a product called Sex Appeal by Sonia Roselli. I think I talked about it in my skincare video, but it's like a really light topical exfoliant. And if you use that first and then use a product like the water balm that I put on Pamela earlier, the moisturizer will really sink into your skin better if you've pre-exfoliated and then your foundation lays a lot smoother. I will link, I don't have the product linked now because we're live, but after this, everything we used, I'll put in the description bar and I'll add the water bomb. It's a really, really good one. Um, it's the only moisturizer I found that completely sinks into the skin. It doesn't leave like a, a greasy film or anything like that. And it does give it like kind of a bounce. Like it just feels really smooth. So the foundation looks really nice. Okay, last highlighter. This is the Amrezi. 
or Amrazi, I'm actually not here, sure how to say it. This is by Anastasia. So this one, I'll do a little bit on my hand. This one is like very, not glittery, but very like metallic. So this is what I was saying earlier. If you go in right away with something like this, it's a little bit too strong. So I just like to use it as like a topper. And then I usually will do like a little bit on the collarbones too. This one that she's wearing? Yes. yes. And if you're wearing um, like something where your shoulders are seen, I always do the shoulders. I think that's super pretty. Little glow. All right, guys. So we have a before video of her and it's before the brows. So we're going to play that right now so you can see the before and see the final look. Okay, so that was the before of beautiful Pamela, and this is <laughs> the after. I love it. It's bronzy, it's glowy, it's very fresh. If you guys recreate it, tag me on Instagram, and I hope you like this video. We will be back next week with another live, so make sure you're subscribed. Thanks, guys. Bye.